welcome back to another episode of Crumpets and Kerosene. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kelly. I play Hank the Barbarian. Fun fact about Hank is he's got 12 half-elf children, and he's got one more on the way. Yeah, I'm Donnie. I play Eli Dresden. Hi team, Seth again. I play Merle on the show. Interesting fact about Merle, he only has nine toes. He lost his left pinky toe to a snapping turtle when he was 12. My name is Brent Marquis, and I'm playing Jason, and I suppose... I'll grow upon something we said in the last talk about. Uh, Jason Smith smithed his own greatsword, uh, so he has a little bit of blacksmithing skills. I'm Lee Baldwin. I'll be playing our bard, Alora. And something about Alora is that she hates cilantro. Right on. So that's the crew. Hey, Jason, what the hell happened last time? Welcome back, competitors! On the last episode, we finally got some action! Our crazy-ass adventurers tried to use a car to ram the gates on a compound, and Eli didn't make it out alive. While Eli makes his way back to the compound from the Rejuvenation Station, Merle and Jason went through that Vespa gang faster than a model in a room full of old rich people. One ripped off arm, and quite a few broken bones later, Merle and Eli take to themselves to blow up anything of value. Our heroes then grab some mopeds, gas them up, and prepare to ride off into the sunset. Welcome, adventurer. Get ready. Pack a bag, grab a snack, set back, and hang on. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so you guys get your scoots and you start wheeling them out to the road. You finally got them out of the shed. The other buildings burning to the ground. Every, there's bodies everywhere still. And uh, yeah, what'd you guys like to do? Uh, should we start booking it? I know we've got one scoot that has uh, the green, side lime car. green. Yeah, there's one with the sidecar, and there's the main with the lime green and the flames and the tassels. So who's uh, driving the tassels? I think I had that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, right. Who's in the sidecar? I don't know. Who do you want to be in the sidecar? You guys are pulling the vehicles out right now. That would be Merle. You, you want to rock, paper, scissors for that? No. All right, it's fine. I'll do it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you guys get the bikes out there, and uh, are you going to start them up? Yeah, yeah, we'll give the scoots a hard kick, I imagine, probably a kick start, you know. Um, <laughs> okay. We'll give it a hard kick. and Eli, just like, roll, nah, nah, nah. roll a d20 <laughs> for his strength. It's going to be a solid 10 for a roll, plus my strength, uh, 13. Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> you guys are watching Eli, like, pull out the, the scoot and he literally stands it on its kickstand and then he kicks it over as hard as he can. Uh, it tumbles <laughs> over. I'm going to just reach down and turn the key. Uh, there's no key. What? Yeah. yeah. Is it a button? No, there's like literally no key in the ignition. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. Are you can gonna I make a survival scene? check see if I can hotwire it? Yeah, so are you going to do that from the inside of the sidecar, or are you going to get out and... Well, I'm going to get out of the sidecar, yes. Okay, do you want to search the sidecar? I figured I would search it late. Fine, I'll search the sidecar first. All right. Uh, what, you want perception? Yes. No, investigation. Investigation. All right. That's going to be a 14 on the die, and that's an even 14. Okay, so you're 14... As you're rooting around, digging, trying to find stuff within the vehicle, you uh, find a little metal box, and it has a picture of a uh, like a ta- tattoo gun on the front. Ooh, fun! All right, uh, I'm gonna open the box. Meth? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a tattoo gun. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool tattoo gun. Uh, it looks pretty brand new. Um, got all the little components and one one needle and uh one little jar of black ink cool yeah. we'll do tattoos later let's get these bikes started <laughs> sounds good i already tried to kickstart mine it just <laughs> fell over <laughs> you just kicked it <laughs> all right so i'm gonna try and hotwire um mine and mine and uh, jason's bike okay after i get out of the sidecar all right you get out and uh you put the box back in the, the seat 
And as you're coming around to uh, start fiddling with it, uh, everybody roll perception. 14 over here. I got a 16. Jason? 13. Uh, you guys hear like a, like a roar, all of you. Two of them actually, and they sound off, but they're off in the distance behind you. We should probably get these bikes started and get out of here quick. Can we yeah. kind of double down and get these going? Yeah, okay, so up. are you going to kick it again? No, I want. I was trying to kick start it, not kick it over. Uh, Where did you get these from? I wasn't trying to kick it over, like you know, like a kick start, you know, like the old style. I, I don't assumed know it was like you a kick start. about vehicles, so yeah, you pick it no, back no. up. <laughs> no, no, no. Eli has um. No, no. I have my uh, vehicle proficiency. We established that, that before. That's oh, cool. yeah. You didn't roll for it. Oh, so, I, have, I have land vehicle. I have land vehicle proficiency. <laughs> okay. Well, you didn't say that. You just said you kicked your car. No, the, I said I was trying to kickstart it, not kick it over. Yeah, well, my perception and uh, your reality are, the, you know, different. Uh, okay. Oh, so, my God. All of <laughs> Why would I kick it over? You're Eli. <laughs> kickstart the goddamn bike. I'm oh, trying. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, roll, uh, roll to kickstart your vehicle. It's an 11. 11? Okay. You... Uh, kick it down and it kind of like makes a like a like it's trying to start sound you do that a few more times it does the same thing all right just give it some gas try to get it going and make sure it's not flooded okay so go ahead and roll uh, another um, vehicle check that's a seven okay uh you pull the gas cap off and you look down uh to you it looks empty but then you put the cap back on and you keep trying to kick start it uh, no gas. Okay. Jesus Christ. Um, I guess can we search nearby for fuel, for keys? We got nothing sure. to get these going, I guess. Um, you can do whatever you want. Can we burn everything? <laughs> uh, so, Merle, roll D20 as you're trying to hotwire the vehicle. Uh, for your... So it's an 11 on the die plus survival for uh, 16? <laughs> survival? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so being able to hotwire a car is a survival skill. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, you you figure it out, but uh, you realize that it's out of gas. Son of a bitch. Yeah. You know, you go through the motions of how the vehicle operates, and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck, there's no gas. Uh, yeah, but there, there's there's no gas, apparently. These guys just leave empty mopeds sitting in their shed. Bastards. Yeah. All right, so let's go look for, uh, let's go look for some gas. All right. So, uh, Jason, are you going to follow suit, or are you going to – what are you doing? Uh, didn't I grab a gas can last time? Yeah, you burnt the shed down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, I didn't burn that shed down. That was the other Christian. No, that was, no, the shed got burnt. That was with the propane tanks. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, the can that you have is uh, enough to fill one vehicle. Right, I'll fill mine. <laughs> All right, you fill All right well, we've got one gas can. Bring the empty can with us. Maybe we can siphon gas from something else if we need to. Uh, you guys hear another roar, uh, followed by a secondary roar. Uh, it's a different tone, but it's the freaking dinosaurs. There be it's coming from behind you. Uh, perception checks, everybody. Twelve. Ten. Porky. All right. So, Jason, after you fill up your tank, you're looking at <laughs> you're looking at uh, Merle and uh, Eli as you're topping off your tank, and you throw the can to the side, and then you see a sign behind them uh, uh, in the back of the uh, trailer area. It just says "fuel," uh, and there's a huge drum back there. Hey, uh, Eli. Uh, yeah. There's a fuel tank over there. Okay, I uh, go, I pick up the gas can, and I start trudging over to where it appears uh, there's a fuel station. Okay, uh, Merle, are you going to follow, or are you just going to let your battle go by himself? I was going to say, maybe maybe one of us should stay with the mopeds, and one of us be lookout. I feel like Jason's going to leave us here. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. All All right, I'll, so go, I'll go with you with my gun drawn and like looking around and, you know. Oh, cool. Making sweet. sure that. Yeah. All right, uh, sweet. Uh, let's let's hustle up then. And can we stay a little low to the ground and try and be a little sneaky as we go? 
How low do you want to go? How low can you go? This line of questioning does not end well for Eli, but as low as I can get. Okay. And roll sneak. Uh, <laughs> I roll. <laughs> What'd you roll there, Eli? Uh, I actually rolled an 18. Oh, my God. All right. right? You, like a basset hound, take to the ground. And very nice, very nicely make a way uh, around. As you guys get to the edge of the junkyard or burning building and the rest of the uh, tattered uh, area, you see a giant fuel barrel um, hanging. And there's this giant two-headed ogre just looks like it's having a conversation um, and it's not facing so. you. It's facing, it's off to the side. It's yelling at a cage. Hmm. I feel like we should probably kill this thing. It's in a cage oh, though. Is it in that, a cage or is it yelling at a cage? No, no, it's yelling at the cage. Oh, it's yelling at a cage. Oh, Yeah, we might need to take this guy out. I'm going to see if I can get the moped started. Okay, uh, roll 20. 15. All right, cool. 15. Uh, yeah, it turns over like beautifully. And as soon as it turns over, uh, Eli and Merle, the ogre turns around and you realize it has two heads. Uh, and they're looking at each other, arguing. As it turns around to look in your guys' general direction and its perception, it does not see you guys. Oh, they're speaking it's English. English. Okay. Oh, it's speak. Oh, okay. Uh, but it looks like it's arguing with itself. All right, let's get this fuel and get the hell out of here. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh... So we're going to go load up that can. Okay, so you start walking that direction. Laura, <laughs> okay, you're in this cage. Uh, you have all your stuff with you. You kind of you uh, wake up uh, slumped over in the cage. You feel the heat in the, from the sun beaming down, and you hear a couple voices talking, uh, but you're still kind of waking up and you hear the sound of like a, it sounds like a bike, a moped starting up. Um, perception check. Okay. Is a 19 total. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so you're, like, you're opening your eyes. You're not too, uh, yeah, you see this massive ogre standing or facing away from you with two heads and you see two guys kind of crouched over by a building looking at you guys. Uh, I'm gonna start like waving my arms around and hey, hey, hey okay. I'm up here. <laughs> totally blew up our spot. <laughs> one of the heads turns and looks at you while the other one's oh, facing shit. them. <laughs> I, I, I put a finger to my lips and just go shh. And it, it's can a, I see that? Hey, <laughs> How hey. far away am I? But can I also say I use my thaumaturgy and it actually is just a super loud shh. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm still uh, figuring out how it works. So the other head turns and is trying to look in your general direction. And the other one is looking at um, it's looking at you and it uh, says, hey, dinner's awake. Hey, guys, good news. I got the vehicle started. And the head <laughs> turns back around and they both bonk heads right, looking around. Uh, I'm going to take off my bag and try and like see what I have. If I can like put together something. Okay. Uh, you've been here for a while, um, not in the cage, but in the game. Uh, you can't remember okay. what happened to you or how you got here, but yeah, you put your bag on the ground and you start digging around. What are you uh, digging out? Uh, my gun. Depending on how far away is the ogre from the cage? He's like 10 feet or 15 feet away from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put together my gun. Okay. As you're putting together your gun, you realize that there's a huge fire off to the right of you on the opposite side of the fuel tank and there's like a huge bar uh with a little handle like maybe it's to cook you <laughs> <laughs> uh i glance on it and try and just not think about that right now <laughs> right, roll, roll. I gotta focus on this <laughs> yeah uh roll uh dexterity to put your weapon together just a regular dex check. Yep. Yep. So that's going to be 17. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're sliding all the pieces in there together pretty well. Okay. Eli and Merle, you, uh, <laughs> you see this giant ogre. It's turning its head different directions, uh, both of them. Uh, 
and they both turn and look at you guys. Well, and, I think the jig's up here. Uh, Merle, Merle is a uh, Merle is a uh, lawful good character, and there's no way he can just let this girl get eaten. Yes, yeah, so you notice. Um, roll perception. Yeah, that's a nat twenty. Oh yeah, you totally like you put yeah, everything little... together. You see, you see this giant bonfire with the little bar, and it looks like roasting a like a pig, you know, or whatever. And you look over in the cage, you see a a, um, a female character is starting to put something together. You see a character that's cloaked putting something together in a bag, and you've gathered that obviously two and two they're going to eat her or eat the person. You can't really tell if it's a guy or a girl. Eli. Yes. What are you doing? Um, I think I'm still going to try and go for distraction. Um, I want to try and shift my thaumaturgy and change the color of the fire and try and make it change kind of purple, pink, green, and make it kind of change all sorts of colors to distract okay, uh, so the owner. Is that spell... It's a cantrip. It just kind of has the effect, like kind of like uh, prestidigitation would. It just kind of happens to change the color. Okay. So how are you casting the spell? Uh, I guess I will uh, remember back when I was a kid and I would get those little packets that you rip open and throw into the fire that change the color. Those super chintzy uh, little things. And I will just like think really hard about that, like rub my hands together and just like shoot my fingers towards the uh, fire trying to make it get to change the color. All right. So spirit fingers. Got it. Yes. Uh, spirit fingers. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Merle, powers. you you see him like cock his head back and he throws his arms out and he's doing like spirit fingers towards the fire. And it uh, the fire gets like more intense and it's flashing different colors, but the, uh, the ogres are more focused on both of you guys. Uh, Eli, so you're in a, I just say uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, you're in a trance right now. Uh, your eyes rolled in the back of your head and you're doing your weird finger dance. And uh, Merle, uh, what are you doing? I'm going like all authority on it. Like I slap my hands together. And I, uh, I I yelled to him to, to to snap out of it and get the get the fuel. Um, and I'm gonna go over there and try and help whoever's in that cage slash kill an ogre. Uh, okay. All right, cool. Roll initiative. The ogre <laughs> turns around and grabs. Uh, yeah, you can roll initiative too. Okay. So seventeen. Okay. On initiative. Nineteen. Okay. I have eighteen. Okay, so it's gonna be okay. So and the ogre turns around and grabs this huge. It looks like a tree trunk, and that's what it's doing for its turn. As one of the heads looks at you and uh, licks his lips, and it's like, you're going to be good. And so, Merle, you're up. All right. Um, so I'm going to fire a shot off at one of the heads um, with my pistol. Okay. Um, so plus six to hit on that. So that's a 13 plus 6, so 19. Yeah, you hit him. Um, you don't hit him in the head, but you hit him like in the neck. And he like grabs his shoulder. He's like, oh, kind of stumbles. He grabs that tree trunk and he pulls it up. Am I rolling damage on that? Yeah. Four, so six points of damage on that. Okay, yeah. A bullet gets stuck in him. Your weapon is finally put together, uh, but you have no ammo. Oh. <laughs> I do have action surge. Ooh, he's not done yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send another one off, which is a 12. Uh, that misses. Okay. Uh, so you uh, your weapon's put together. You realize you don't have a bullet. Um, so I don't have any ammo. So I'm going to try... You can search your bag, remember? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try searching my bag again. Okay. Um, so is it going to be my full action then? Uh... I guess that's a partial action. You start digging. You okay, can grab so the bolt. Would you roll? It's a, a 15. All right. Yeah, you pull up a fistful of bullets. You have enough time to load your gun, but you're not going to be able to shoot it. So you load okay. one into the bolt, and you lock it, and uh, you take aim. As my movement, can I um, – how big is the cage that I'm in? Uh, it's four foot by six foot. Okay. Is it on the ground or you said it was up in the air? Uh, it is in the air. Okay. 
I'm going to try sitting down and putting like my back to the bars as a way to brace. Okay, cool. For my next shot. I like that. Give yourself inspiration for cool. Cool, cool, cool. understanding physics. <laughs> <laughs> Eli. Um, okay, so as I am spirit fingers, the firing, uh, that spirit fingers oh god this you know no matter what i say this is gonna sound bad uh my spirit fingers are making the fire change color (laughs) and as i as i get knocked out of this trance uh what i want to happen is for me to cast fairy fire but kind of have the color and explosion come out of the fire to hit the ogre so fairy fire he would have to make a dexterity saving throw and if he fails, he'd be outlined in a violet light of my choice color and attacks would basically have advantage against him and he would not be able to become invisible. So it's the after roll over? And it's uh, dexterity. dexterity save and you've got to beat a, it's a 16. Nice. Uh, the first head, it whizzes right past the first head. And the, <laughs> the second head, it goes in between both and misses them. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, I'll use the rest of my movement, the rest of my turn, to make my way towards where the fuel is going to be. Okay. So, uh, all right, Spirit Fingers, you take off running. and uh, <laughs> All right, Spirit Fingers. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, <laughs> it turns over. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, do I hear the gunshots? Oh, yeah, you hear gunshots and, like, yelling. I'm going to put it to the side uh, of the building and then just jog over to where they're at. I guess I'll my sword. All right. So next round, you'll reach them with your sword drawn. Come back around. <clears throat> Merle. Yes, sir. What you going to do? You see, this is what you see. So after you fired your shots, Eli shakes his head out of his trance and then he throws his hands up. And he like thrusts them towards the uh, ogre as uh, two little balls of energy come out of the fire, two different colors. And it one passes one head and it kind of like watches it go by. And then the other one goes in between both heads and they're like, ah, and they both hit heads. But it doesn't do anything. That's what you saw. What would you like to do? Right. Well, I'm just going to keep shooting at it because it seems to be uh, working at least somewhat. Um, so I'll take another. Uh, so I have a shotgun, don't I? Yeah, we all like. Did we pick up a bunch of shotguns? You picked up the right, shotgun. Gonna, uh, you, you picked up the shotgun, but you didn't say you're loading it. So, uh, it's a breach shotgun, by the way. Um, okay. So it's gonna take you around to open the breach, slide two rounds. Yeah, in. forget it. I'm, I'll just I'll just shoot it with my pistol again. Okay. Which is a seventeen. It hits. Uh, you hit it in the other shoulder, and it like roars. <laughs> or both heads are like, ow, ooh, ah. So that would be seven points of damage on that. Okay. And you hear one of them like, son of a bitch. And he like takes a tree trunk and he goes to swing at you. Or he's throwing it at you because he's still uh, a little bit further away. Cool. All right. So. <laughs> um, so I'm, I am going to, I'm going to move um, while it's still my turn um, around the side, like towards the cage. Um, so that I can be like, so I can see her and be within like, um, you know, be within earshot or whatever. Um, and for my, with my, uh, my action, action surge, I'm going to attempt to throw her uh, the shotgun uh, okay. rounds, I guess. I'll just take see if that'll help her. Go ahead and take out my action. Okay. So you're making your movement and that's creature's turn. He's going to swing at you with his giant tree trunk. And he, it misses you as you uh, duck, but you can feel the force of the wind pass you. Uh, this tree trunk's like four feet wide. Um, it's acting like a great club. Yeah. <laughs> Completely misses um, you. Whoa. Uh, so go ahead and uh, roll to throw your uh, the uh, shotgun. Dex. Yep. Ooh, 19 on the die, so 23. Okay, so he throws it towards you. Go ahead and roll a... Uh, uh, are you going to try to catch it, or are you just going to let it hit the bars while you're... 
Uh, Mounting man. yourself. Uh, I'm going to try and catch it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to move out of your movement. Okay, so you, <laughs> you break your movement. Yeah, I'm just going to have to get back in place at the next time. <laughs> So you're on the other, you're like on the opposite side of uh, the gate or the bars. Uh, so roll a dexterity to like lunge to grab it so it doesn't fall to the ground. Uh, well, that's a 12. Okay, you completely miss it. Because oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you like, you're aiming and all of a sudden out of the corner of your eye, you see him throw something and you go to grab it and you're like, oh. I yell, I've got a gun already. <laughs> yeah, now, you're gonna, now you can take a shot, but you're going to be at disadvantage because you're not. I thought she had no ammunition. Oh, sure. I have five bullets. I dug them out oh. on the last turn. Yeah. So that's my bad. You're going to be at disadvantage for your shot because you're not braced because you're half leaning down. But like a good soldier, your weapon still mounted on your shoulder. Uh, oh, it's your you turn. You have. Uh, inspiration i was gonna say i think i'm just gonna use my inspiration so it'll even out okay so i roll. don't have disadvantage and i'm gonna do a sharp shot and take a minus five Ooh. okay so roll uh nat 20 or, i mean roll your 20 <laughs> oh i was <laughs> like uh oh <laughs> <laughs> is that my only option <laughs> all right uh oh well i came pretty damn close all right uh so that's minus five so 14 so that's a 19 to hit. All right, roll damage. So D10. that's 10 plus the sharp shot is going to be 12. Jesus. All right, what's it look like when the bullet pierces his head? Um, do I get both of them? Nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dane. <bullet>. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I kind of like lunge across the cage and I like fall flat and uh, turn towards him and just barely manage to like get up on my shoulder. And uh, I'm going to take a shot from, like, the bottom of the cage, and it's going to go right through the top of his head. Okay. Uh, she has a Remington 700. Okay. So the back of <laughs> – so Merle, roll uh, the Constitution. Uh-oh. Gross. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a squeamish guy? <laughs> oh, dude, nat 20. Okay. Ooh. So I like lick my lips. <laughs> yeah, <as> you, <laughs> you took Eli. Roll D twenty of Constitution. Oh my god! I I don't think it's gonna matter what I had. I rolled a four. <laughs> Oops, right it. there. Okay, so uh, Merle, you take your shots, and it turned to swing. It missed you, uh, and then the figure in the cage. Uh, dropped the gun and she glared at you and she rolled down and then she took a shot and the sound of that 700 going off it literally pierced the uh, giant's forehead and the whole back of his head because she's so close basically blew out the back of his head and his brain literally falls out and uh mm. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Merle, uh, Eli, you are just covered in brain matter and <laughs> blood particles as the bullet near like goes past you. I'm uh, absolutely doing that gag thing where like I'm trying not to throw up, but it's like <laughs> like a cat just trying to pass a nasty hairball. If yeah, it's been a brown cat. so it's pretty bad. Uh, Jason, as you're running up, you see this, but you don't have to react because you're still running up. But you hear a loud uh, gunshot. Uh, and you hear, no, no, Steve. And uh, the ogre goes to swing at the cage, uh, unfortunately, with the giant tree uh, in his oh, no. And he hits the trees, uh, the, the cage, as it flies over and starts rolling towards the fire and slides into the fire. Oh, geez. But there's two feet. You're up against the wall, and you're not in the fire, but you're close enough that you can feel the heat of the uh, fire. And the ogre is going to do a legendary action, and he's mm -hmm. going to throw the tree trunk at you as you're in the fire. And the tree trunk goes over the cage. 
uh, but you can feel the wind <laughs> blow past you as the tree plows into like a set of bikes that are lined up. It just crushes them as it rolls over. And uh, he lets out a large roar. Um, Jason, you roll up on the scene now. And you see one of the heads just like uh, completely disfigured. The other one's raging. But you see this cage halfway in the fire. And you see someone pushing back, struggling to get away from the flames. They're not in the flames, but they're pretty close. How big is this cage? It's four foot by six foot. Uh, does it, is it hanging by something? No, it was, uh, knocked. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was knocked off the chain. It was hanging, and it tumbled into the ground and landed near the fire. I, I'm gonna, seeing that the ogre is probably the biggest threat right now, I'm gonna, um, run up behind and try to take out one of its knees with my sword. Okay, roll to strike. Eleven. Okay. You clip it, but he's still walking towards the cage. Uh, roll damage. Uh, only five. Okay. Uh, he kind of like limps a little bit, but he's still enraged walking towards um, the cage. Uh, Eli, you're gaining your composure back a little bit. Um, would you like to do something? Yeah. Um, so is the cage still in the fire then? Is Alora still in danger of being burned up in there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then I am going to stop kind of mid-step heading towards the fuel. Uh, I want to turn and I would like to try and use my thorn whip cantrip to pull the cage out of the fire. All right. Explain how that works. Uh, I think what I do is I kind of, I'm running, I stop, I mid-step very look very out of my game out of my element and like i kind of look around like as if i'm looking for something and like i kind of motion like pantomime like as if i need to grab it and pull it out but when i do that my cantrip lasts and the thorn whip kind of like ah shocks me and like goes out and this thorny kind of vine wraps around the bars of the cage and i just kind of like all right this is new and i just start to like reef and pull and kind of like get a low stance and try to like pull the cage out of the fire. Roll a strength check. That's going to be grand total of uh, 16. Okay. Uh, you strain because the cage is really heavy and you're small. Uh, but it slowly moves with you. I mean, it's... Um, yeah. Uh, Merle, you see these vines shoot out of Eli as his eyes glow like a green color and his head cocks back. And uh, these Holy vines shit. shoot out... <laughs> <laughs> and rip into the cage and he starts pulling but it's like not moving very fast um doing that thing where my feet aren't really getting traction just trying to like go back and go back and i'm like yeah, he help me, like come on help me pull he looks like he's being a cool hero but it's not re- really working out for him but uh, go ahead and uh, what would you like to do um i, I want to bear hug him and pull him while he's holding on to the whip just try and pull him backwards i love you man <laughs> <laughs> Eve ho pull I thought Strength you were going to put a bullet to its head I'll save you <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm counting on Jason uh, raging out and killing this thing okay so you start um, pulling go strength strength. so I have a 17 on my strength check oh yeah you start pulling and the cage starts moving a little bit more um, Eli you feel like you're, you're doing a lot because you're concentrating so hard and pulling the vine you actually feel like you're doing it but uh merle is pulling you <laughs> we got it we got it come on man and like i got this <laughs> <laughs> don't grab the thorns watch what you grab <laughs> oh shit good point uh no nah, you're good you got a con check oh sure go ahead that would be a 12 yeah okay you don't get any vines on you but uh, you're cautious. They are shooting out of his arm, uh, like Spider-Man style. I was thinking Spider-Man. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Actually disturbing. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the cage starts yeah, moving. Just don't let Marvel hear this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, It's not comfortable. I imagine it's not a comfortable experience. Spider-person, you know. Yeah, you're, you're being yeah. dragged. The cage is 
getting pulled out of the fire, but these vines have wrapped around near you, but not like they haven't touched you or anything and the cage starts moving slowly. Uh, the ogre goes to swipe at um, Jason because he like looked at him. <laughs> looked at him funny. Swings his arm, completely misses you. <laughs> By like four feet, he like swats at you and you're like, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but he cool, keeps uh, he keeps on walking towards the cage as uh, the vines are slowly pulling out. And uh, my turn? No. You're on to the cage. What would you like to do um, now that they're pulling you out of the fire? Um, I can't really see, like, a way to get out myself, so... I mean, do I have a shot? You can rack another round, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. What's the top of the cage look like? Is it like domed or is it like solid? Like it's I can't solid. See it. There's a huge lock, yeah. uh, but that's in the fire side. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to go over to where the vine is then and uh, try and help out as well. Like pull myself along it. <laughs> like shake your, like just kind of like reef the cage like as we're going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like running and elbowing the cage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you rack around, and then you're going to push on the cage. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to try. All right, Jason. All right. Do you need me to Jason. roll anything? Nope, you're good. Okay. You're just shaking violently against the bars. <laughs> yeah, but you're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I can't take a shot anyways. <laughs> Uh, Jason's going to get a little upset that this thing's ignoring him. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to rage. Oh, awesome. And then he's going to rage. How are you going to rage? What what brings you to that point and what's it look like? Um, well, I get really upset. No. Um, <laughs> uh, he just thinks about all the times that he was ignored by scouts. The fact that he never quite lived up to the potential that he thought he had. How this thing seems to be ignoring him as well. He's going to just tap into that. Your rage is an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Think of all those rejection letters. <laughs> he has flashbacks to school, school sports. Yeah. That's, that's like how he builds his life around it. Okay, no, there's so one other writer who had rage issues. You... Uh, <laughs> You go ahead, right, you flash back to opening those letters to all those colleges that uh, all those scouts basically saw your last game and you were to catch the final ball. You're, you were going to win it for the group and you missed it. It literally went right past you and you <laughs> lost the game for the school. And all those scouts have just sent you nothing but rejection letter after rejection letter. And that, You'd even you, send an application. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that. University awesome. of Ohio. I didn't even <laughs> find him. And the rage fills you. And uh, yeah, you can make your attack now. All right. I'm going to do you know, all those times I sent stuff to the Paris Review. <laughs> so that's a 22. Okay. I thought you were going to say a one. How big? Just like that last moment, and then you <laughs> fail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you connect. Uh, what's it look like when your blade pierces into the body of the ogre as he's not facing you and walking towards the cave? As he's not looking at me, I just get even more upset and <clears throat> like uh, I just aim for the crack. And wait, the, <laughs> the ass crack? Yep. <laughs> oh my god. He's not going to look at him. I mean, it's good. Like colonoscopy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> you get right. I mean, you're almost like, you know, you're almost there. But yeah. So to describe how he dies. I don't want to say hilt deep, but. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just pushing it in until it <laughs> stops. <laughs> And then I'm just going to twist on the uh, hilt. Uh, all right. So as it's walking <laughs> towards <laughs> Eli, oh. S- Merle, and Laura, oh, 
Constitutions. Oh boy. Hmm. It's not my strong suit. <laughs> That's a four. <laughs> yeah, I got a 15. seven. Oh, 15 for me. Oh my god. That's a first. All right. <laughs> Merle, you've never seen anything in your life. Jason basically shoved the sword so deep up into this ogre, it blows through his chest as his arm goes into his ass. And the blade <laughs> goes up and cuts through the chin and the jaw, splitting the remaining in between the heads in half. Uh, it, yeah, you you don't lose it, but it's probably the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. And it seems so <laughs> real than any yeah, other graphics are incredible. thing you saw in the game, yeah. Uh, Eli, you're like, oh, okay, sure. I remember I'm hungry and have a craving for quesadillas. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't and know why. Just that's, yeah. <laughs> you, or, or you, you lose it. You have never, like, it was facing you and all of a sudden it just, a sword blows out through the chest and cuts it from the belly up in half. As the body fillets Ugh. into two pieces. <laughs> Uh, guts and everything just falling out of it, the sections as both sides fall to the, or both halves of the ogre fall to the side. It's, it's all, you lose it. You just start hurling. Uh, but the cage keeps moving. Um, <laughs> That's good news, at least. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I love that you she's still being pulled now. towards it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, she's still getting pulled towards this That's thing the horrible just... part is that, yes, the vine, <laughs> oh, went, <no. laughs> the vine is underneath the creature and you're still being pulled towards it. That is a huge pool of blood. I mean, this thing had gallons. Uh, <laughs> Jason, you're just covered in blood. Was that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> Good, good job, buddy. Come on, help us get, help us, help us get this girl out of the fire. Come on, man, we gotta pull her out. I'm just gonna grab the cage and like try to launch it. Oh yeah. Oh, so, no. It's gonna take you a second. She's still so, raging. <laughs> you basically just let go of your sword because yeah. your hand's so far in. You can feel the outside of his body, and so you go, all right. And you pull your hand out. You're like, oh, oh, yuck. And you turn. You go in the front and you pick up your blade and. Uh, whatever you want to do with it. But and you start walking towards the cage. Uh, Laura, you see this creature covered in blood. It, it pick up its sword, walk towards you. Uh, what would you like to do? <laughs> it's I, I mean, I just... Because uh, uh... again, you don't know these folks and you never saw this other guy. Um, uh, shoot. Okay, I'm going to try where the lock is and just like start beating on it with the back of my gun. Ooh. All right. Roll a strike. <laughs> break that lock. So is that strings? That's not bad. So it's a, uh, well, I have not, it's 13. Ooh, okay. So as soon as you strike the lock, uh, your hammer clicks, but nothing happened. Oh uh, God. <laughs> and you hit it a few more times and the lock pops off. Okay. Uh, I, I open up the gate and I just kind of like run out of it and, uh, and I'm going to point my gun at them. Okay. And who are you? Who are you? What are you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So Jason, Look, you walk are, up to are you the gate. Player? I'm sorry. What? I didn't hear what you said. I was asking if you were another player. Uh, yes. I mean, isn't, aren't they all? I uh I I just I'll I'll release the uh thorn whip and I'll uh, just kind of dust my pants off and uh kind of well, Laura what what do you look like what do we see when we kind of get a look at you for the first time like what are we looking so, at when you run out of the cage So she's like a really slight person she's short and she's like really thin and she's got like really pale skin and like dark circles under her eyes looks like she hasn't slept in like 10 years She's got really long blonde hair, but it, it looks like it hasn't been cut in a long time. She just kind of like braids it so it stays in place. And she's got like a big baggy sweatshirt, and some old jeans on, and uh, some practical boots, practical looking boots. Um, 
Uh, she dresses mostly in black, and uh, she's got like a backpack on that seems to be like a little too overgeared for her. Okay. And a big long sniper rifle. Okay. All right. Which is currently pointing very, at us. Very post apocalypse <laughs> vibe. Um, okay. Um, I guess uh, I'll I'll kind of respond to her and just kind of wave and be like you know we we were just trying to get some fuel we heard you crying out and saw this ogre trying to make you his lunch figured we'd lend you a hand you you doing all right uh i think i think i'm doing okay now um you you guys are getting gas where are you going uh we're we're trying to get back to uh back to town uh the start point we got to return this uh moped bit of a reward on it but uh you know we're, we're making our way out of here if you want to ride we could probably give you one i look back at jason and uh merle for jason's covered in blood oh. <laughs> uh you know we'll, we'll get him cleaned up <laughs> but uh yeah maybe you can get another moped and get on the road if you want to uh help us out uh okay okay i mean do we have enough vehicles or is it just the one I remember back to the shed full of mopeds and I'm like, uh, probably just the one. You might have to ride on the back of the green one. <laughs> uh, no, I'm like, there's a, there's a, there's a full shed. And uh, I just awkwardly kind of point back to, uh, cause there, remember, is that uh, right? Kelly, there's a shed full of them, right? That one. Oh, yeah, there's and, a uh, whole shed full of them. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jason, what would you like to do? I'm going to grab onto the bars and just pull. Taking the cage with you. <laughs> yeah, you. You see the guy covered in blood, looking vacantly off into the distance, and he just starts pulling the cage. Uh, I'm gonna further. like put one foot on the side and just yank on the bars. Oh, okay. Uh, roll a strength check. Not twenty. Cool. All right, you rip off nice. both bars. Uh, so now you have two uh, eight foot. Um, steel bars because the cage okay. fell the way the cage fell it loosened them and you just ripped them off so you have two iron bars just gonna look at her and yell you're free <laughs> um thank you uh I, i'm gonna lower my gun and um kind of like walk towards them i guess be like good, good, good job, buddy. Good job. You got yeah. that cage. You show good job. You showed it. Thank you. I'm gonna try to like <laughs> swing my head to him and just kind of like breathe for a few seconds and try to calm myself. <laughs> are are you gonna keep good, those? Just, <laughs> as you turn and look at Eli, you see these vines slowly suck into his wrists as he's talking to you. It's a little disconcerting, okay. but uh, and his <laughs> eyes like blink back into normal uh, vision. Like a little like an uh, just so. If I've been playing the game for a while, do I know about like magic and everything yet? Yeah, yeah, you guys know, history, like, yeah, yeah, you guys know that everybody has abilities and stuff. But, um, okay. This magic seems a lot more different than the games that you normally played, or the the game you've normally played. It's very basic and generic magic, and this seemed more uh, visually intense and intricate. Okay, Merle, what would you like to do? I'm going to go pick up that shotgun that I threw. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you go pick up the shotgun and you open up the breach. There's no bullets in it. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, so <laughs> you're, yeah. You would have been safe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you uh, put that back. So Eli, you're, you're going to go get fuel. Yeah. Let's uh, I'm going to just, after I offer to Laura, if she wants to come with us or help us out, I'm going to start heading straight for the fuel, fill up the Jerry can and uh, yeah, do that and start getting the mopeds ready to go. So you walk up to the giant container. There's no spout or the only spout um, that you can find is about four feet wide. So basically a lot of gas would get dumped everywhere if I use this. I guess so. I mean, are you a professional uh, heavy machinery guy? No, definitely not. Um, I'm just thinking, are there any other mopeds that are that are smaller around? I could just siphon gas out of them instead of this, maybe? I just don't want to create a huge... 
Yeah, you can search. There's a lot of bikes everywhere. Yeah, okay, all right. Like oh. From the barrel? Like, is there a top to it? Well, it's a, it's a huge, it's one of those giant, uh, like, fuel tanks. Like a drum of fuel. It's like, is it like a drum of fuel? Like a barrel? Or is it no, like no, it's not a barrel. Of... It's like a giant, like. Like off a truck? Yeah, five, uh, 500,000 gallon uh, tanker. Oh. I have tinker tools. Can I use those to try and, like. Hey, sure. Give it a shot. All right. Uh, you um, see, he, as you're walking over, you see tap Eli. It like a keg. <laughs> you see Eli like stare at the giant hole or the giant breach, and he looks up at the thing. And he looks at <laughs> looks at the breach. He looks back up at the giant tank, and then he looks over, <laughs> starts looking at some bikes, and he starts walking towards some mopeds like piled up in the corner. It's like I know there's fuel in there, but getting out is the issue. Have we checked if there's fuel in there? Um, like not <laughs> really. I'm, I think that's that. That's true. And I, I go to just open. I, I mean, I motion. Can you like kick opening. it? Or? No, no. You said good. Uh, roll a strength check. <laughs> Four total. Uh, Merle, as you're walking up to to use your tools, you see Eli like start walking towards bikes. He stops. And then he like runs over to grab the giant uh, uh, vice and he starts like trying to open it and he's like struggling, uh, pulling it left and right and just can't figure out uh, how it's opening. Uh, you walk up to the container. All right. Um, hold on a second there, bud. <laughs> Take out my tools and I, uh, I, I, I t- I'm, I'm tapping the thing to see if I can figure out where the fuel level is, um, you know, so I can tap just you know below the fuel level and be able to get it to pour out. Oh, nice! Uh, so I'm roll, thinking like paint on the side of it. Yeah. Rule twenty. Uh, uh, yeah. What am I? What's the check? It's uh, dexterity. Okay, so fifteen plus four, so nineteen. All right. Yeah, it's it's low, and you're at about where. You start tapping, and it sounds different. Sounds, and then you hear the empty, emptiness. And so, like you estimate that that's the area you need to make Check your incision. Chicken for a stud. Uh, nope, this is solid. Um, so, uh, so I guess I'll I'll roll to try and use my tinker's tools to uh, to kind of tap it and get a, a flow of fuel coming out. Okay, so you pull out uh, a kegerator. <laughs> out of your little thing <laughs> uh, and then you pull out the little can opener piece um, and you can probably put two and two together roll uh, ooh, what would this fall under let's say strength because you got to pierce the metal so do a strength right. check so 17 on the die and plus five for strength, so 22. Okay, so you, you, you make eye contact with Eli as you jam the, the can opener in there to make your hole. You like and that? You slip the uh, kegerator in there and it seals real quick. Some, some fuel falls out, not a lot. You, you ta- tapped a few kegs in your day. Yeah, one or two. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you got it tapped and it, seems to be functioning all right sweet we'll uh hold the jerry can underneath and get it filled okie dokie uh are there any other empty cans around maybe oh yeah there's cans everywhere maybe we should fill an, abs- uh, an extra one up just in case we need more fuel down the road it's or a good you know, idea. we want to blow something up <laughs> yeah, fair enough all right there's lots of cans they're all five gallon um or uh one gallon jugs made out of metal Nice, the the old school ones from like the seventies. Yep. <laughs> nice. All right, I'll take I'll take one for the other moped, and then an extra one to put on the back of mine. So I got one in each hand. Right, Lord. Sweet. Uh, you guys are gonna show her where the moped uh, storage facility is. Let's see if she can get her own bike instead of you know riding on the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Eli Probably a good creep. Idea. <laughs> Although she's the sniper, it might not be a bad idea for her to be in the sidecar because she's got a two-handed weapon. 
Good call. Mm. That's true. All right. That's what I meant. I'd be fine with the sidecar. Sweet. All right. So you guys make a better vehicle. Don't sit uh, on the tattoo gun because that will hurt. <laughs> okay, we we'll put it in the glove box. <laughs> you can ride with me. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just nod along. But okay, Jason, you drive. Uh, Alora, you go in the sidecar, and Merle, you get in behind me. I'm gonna go look for my own bike. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, I looked down at the ground, sad. I just wanted somebody. To wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you guys letting Eli drive the motorcycle with the sidecar? Is that my understanding? No, no, Jason's no, no, no. driving this. Oh, okay, damn. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I've still got. I've still got constant the, uh, the dexterity one. checks. Just waiting for him to fail. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, uh, st- I've still got. I've still got the the objective one that we've got to return. Okay, so my whole, my whole <laughs> thing. No. You guys grab another. Uh, well, if we got to return one, then we should probably grab one to keep, because we're going to be one short then when we get there. That's true. We should have somebody not be in the side curve for the first trip. Okay, so so even if like. Go. Yeah, so everyone's going to grab one because, yeah, I'll ride on the sidecar when we leave the place. But okay. That makes sense, yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Since everybody's dead in the area, um, <laughs> everybody's going to get percentage to finding their vehicle. Uh, the higher percentage, the better. And you can take your role or you can take my role. So we'll start with <clears throat> Jason. The vehicle's already found. You want to go with that one? Yeah. The sidecar one? Yeah. Oh, you're taking yeah. the sidecar one? Okay. All right. So Jason gets on the sidecar. That's the best sidecar vehicle that's there. So you're, you're good to go. Uh, it was well maintained because it has the sidecar. So we're going to go to uh, Eli because you got to pick a new vehicle, right? I guess or- like a backup one for after because I'm riding the the green one that's got the flames right. and the tassels to return. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can take your percentage or my percentage. So my, I'll take your percentage because mine was 22. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So 98. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Nice. Yeah, nice. you find a pristine, it was under a tarp. This How much chrome is, is on it? Oh, it's just <laughs> the best tarp. <laughs> littered in chrome. Uh, it has like a little hula dancer like on the windshield. The windshield's <laughs> complete. It's yes. got uh, it's got all the side mirrors. It's completely put together, and it's got a, like a little carry pouch on the back, and you can fit another person on it. Excellent. Nice banana seat. Yeah. <laughs> or you can have bags uh, on that back area. Okay, so uh, Merle. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, so what did you roll? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? You take I rolled roll? 77. I'll take, I'll take my 77. Okay, good, because I rolled 42. All right, you find one. It's, it, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's not decked out in chrome or anything. Um, it's, it's blue. Uh, and it's nice. got it's side mirrors. It's got white wall tires. And, uh, you know, it's decent. Mm. It's where you need to Love go. white walls. Yep. I look at him jealously. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna roll for your. Uh, oh, you're gonna just stick with the sidecar, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, because we oh, need. Yeah, can we get the one we're turning back in. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're we're digging good. through. We're good. Um. No. No. I'm gonna roll. Um. Ooh, I'm taking mine. It's a 93. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, 82. <laughs> All right. You find a another really nice chromed out one. It's got white walls, but it's got jet black uh, frame with red mm. inlays, and it's got a uh, compass on it, like a little ball compass, and mm. it's got extra storage or uh, a passenger can sit on the back. And there's two side bags attached to it, leather. Perfect. I'm going to, hmm, yeah, I guess I'm going to put my, my, can I fit my bag in there? Or is that just for extra stuff? Are you fitting it inside the seat or are you fitting it in the side bag? Uh, I'm going to put it on the seat for now. I don't really want to Yeah, no, it fits. You're good. mess with it. Can we put my bike in the sidecar to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> and then that way we can, because right now we have an extra bike to get back there. Well, one of us is going to have to ride on it, yeah. 
I, I can do that. Yeah, it's just none will be on the sidecar and everybody will be driving in a... Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I, I don't know yeah, for how to roll for one and also get it back. I'd have to like tow it behind mine, but that's... Yeah. That's fine. We'll just be driving. Yeah, you guys all yeah, we get just stuff to... Full tanks we of could gas. Sta- we could stash one and maybe come back for it later. Like, I'm, like uh, that's why we had the sidecar, right? To uh, handle those logistics. Yeah. I'm fine riding. I'm fine... You're just going back Whatever. to town. You don't need to have some. Right, I'll just mine's mine's the like the least <laughs> nice of the bikes that we found. So I guess I'll just stash my bike for now, and we can come back for it. And I'll just ride in the side. Yeah, yeah. St- st- stash your bike, and I okay. hand you yeah. the keys to my super chromed out one. And I just whisper <laughs> to you very, very seriously, I'm still going to be a fancy lad. And I hand <laughs> it to you, oh but like, <laughs> but like I'm, I'm going to need this back someday. And I just I hand you the keys very seriously. <laughs> Except knowing that I want Hank to see me on this scooter. That's so creepy. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's let, 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 let's blow this pops with stand and let's let's get our motors right. going. Get you back to hook town. up. You guys get on your vehicles. The sun's starting to go down. Uh, all your mopeds start up, and you start driving back towards town. I put guys... my bag and my uh, two metal poles in the starting car. Okay. Yep. Are you gonna? Yeah, you see the box with the tattoo gun. Are you gonna also check out? There's a lot of shit in, in the uh, side. Yeah, I'll go through it once we get to town. Okay. Uh, you guys start heading back, and it's not that bad. Uh, you guys pull into town as the sun starts to set. It's the same shitty little setup. Uh, are you guys gonna park outside the diner, or are you gonna park outside nuts and bolts? Uh, let's offload this uh, moped first yeah. and foremost. I don't want to hang on to this any longer than we need to. Yeah. At least it gets stolen or, uh, you know, some asshole kicks it over and, you know, <laughs> something like that. Also looks so, like there's a bunch of Who are you guys shit. giving it to? <laughs> we got nuts and bolts, isn't it? Yeah, it's people in nuts and bolts, right? Yep. Yeah, you see the guy, he's like trying to put the key in the door to lock it as you guys drive up. And uh, you see the brownie on top of the shoulders and he's like, come on, you can do it. Damn it. He's pulling the rein to like one side and it's like, Ugh! and he's like trying to get his hand to put the key in the hole. Uh, you guys park in front, like line up, park in front as he's trying to get the door locked. I hail him and just say, hey, buddy, we uh, before you lock that up, let's, let's get this in the calm down there, eh? <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> He turns around, and the brownie looks first, but then he like, he's like, oh, shit, and he like, pulls the rein, and the, the giant's like, Arr! and he like, completely turns with the key still in his hand. <laughs> like, he is almost there. Uh, and he's, he's like, hey, you guys, oh, you found it. Awesome. And he's like, uh, Come on, let's go. like whips the, the giant out there, like, slowly walking. He's still dragging his maul in his other hand, uh, and he gets to like the sidecar, or to the um, scoot, and for the first time, you see the giant guy with a huge smile. He doesn't have any teeth, and it's really horrifying. And he sits on it, and it lowers even more to the ground. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. And he's like, starts it up, and he's like slowly putting uh, away. Can I awkwardly get off of it as I was no, he probably still over. sitting on it? <laughs> <laughs> he literally takes his foot, and he like kicks you off of it. Uh, okay. But not like not like kick like he's just pushing you off with his foot. Jumps, all right, that's yeah. sweet. Uh, and you, God, he's super strong to you. And uh, you hit the ground, uh, and he gets on it, and again he's like starts it up, <laughs> and he just starts scooting away. We'll be back tomorrow. Ah, oh, shit, we forgot to lock it. A set of keys like hitching as they drive off. Oh, okay, uh, can lock I lock up? Some... Yeah, you no, can roll. Just... You can roll a dexterity. <laughs> The sun's kind of blinding you, so you're at disadvantage. <laughs> he really wants to hit you in the face. Disadvantage? All right. I'm going to say it's slight, sleight of hand, maybe? No. <laughs> sleight of hand is you taking them, but they're hurling toward your face. <laughs> uh, I rolled an eight, so... Uh, it looks like... A, and that's 11. with the disadvantage? Okay. Yeah, that, my, my, my other roll was a 17, you asshole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the keys... Thanks for reminding me. (laughs) The keys hit you in the chest, but they don't like hit you in the face or anything. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of keys. And there was a spike on there for some reason. Um, Of course there was. (laughs) And uh, like one of those, uh, one of those little, uh, what are they? The Thai self-defense pegs that. (laughs) No, it it was like a little pressure points. Oh God. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's a weird keychain, but yeah, there's an actual <laughs> railroad spike on there. Um, Hefty. All right. That the wasn't even must like... be stronger than he looks. So I, I look at all these keys. So am I supposed to lock up? But when I, I think when I'm like what, what, I look back at uh, Jason and Merle, I was like, wasn't he supposed to give us something for that? There were there was just supposed to hook us up, wasn't he? Uh, I think he just did. With the keys to the building? Yeah. Do you guys own this place? We do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a place to stay at least. Well, fair enough. Uh-huh. All right. Because uh, I, I, I take, I kind of take stock a moment and re- realize just how tired I am from having died. I, I'm actually still uh, <laughs> I, I'm out of character. I'm at four hit points still, so I'm really happy I didn't get hit during <laughs> that over. Because I, yeah, a strong breeze might take me out. Uh, but yeah, we, we, I, I take a, a big old yawn. Like, yeah, we should probably get some rest. I'm, uh, I'm pretty beat. I don't understand damage. Yeah, once you so start hitting the so we've 50s, got the run of this place? Oh, I don't know. You have to go inside. Uh, the sun starts to drag go all down. the bikes inside. The wind starts picking up. Uh, you slowly get the bikes inside the door. Uh, once you get inside, you realize that all the cases have metal coverings that go over the front. There's a bunch of locks and on each of the um, cases. Is the repo depot open? I'm going to go upload. Okay, so uh, Jason, you go up and jam your arm in there, and uh, it does its uh thing um i don't i don't know what this is this repo he did not explain this to me beforehand uh yeah so you see jason walk up to this looks like a photo booth box and it's got a picture of a character or a person on the front and uh there's a curtain and he goes in and uh it and he sits down and he closes the curtain and he jams his hand in. you hear like a, a rustling sound as it as you hear a big thud, um, that's his face being sucked into the machine. Um, so the mm-hmm. rest of you see that. Does anyone want to describe to our new... Can I make a history check to see if oh, I know yeah, what is go going on? Good call. Yeah, are you, are you going to pull out your little manual? Yeah, I'm going to pull out my big, big book and uh, open it up to, I don't know, probably... Was it barbarians? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, maybe uh, if it has to do with his class. Um, well, <laughs> you uh, you start to flip through. Uh, roll a history check, or I mean, Arcana. that is an eighteen. Okay, you recognize this as like a respawn point, uh, and you know it as a repo oh. depot station, and you know that uh, as you read into the thing, the repo depot station requires every zone that you enter, you have to. Uh, upload yourself to the repo depot so that that area has your information oh okay so in case i die yes when. yes when you <laughs> okay all right then i'm just gonna wait for him to finish up and then i have to get in there because i haven't had a chance to save <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jason walks out, uh, meat sweats. No, nah, no, nah, you don't have the meat sweats. Uh, <laughs> so you, you come out a uh, little disheveled. Actually, roll a strength check. 11. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It, you plow into the machine as it sucks your arm in. But, it, you know, it hurts, but you're getting used to it. Uh, okay. Uh, Jason walks out of the machine, and he's, like, rotating his arm a little bit. Uh are you going to walk up to uh, the repo depot station? Yeah, I'm going to try and pretend like I know what's happening and be like, yeah, my turn. Just walk <laughs> does, over she, there. does she have a break? I mean, uh, uh, nope. nope. Uh, so you. Nope. <laughs> you like uh, to go well. <laughs> you, you walk in there. Welcome to the repo depot rejuvenation center. My name is Penny. (laughs) As you sit down in the photo part, uh, there's just a little screen in front of you, and then there's this giant hole uh, that has a picture of your arm going into the hole. Okay. I will... I'm going to stick my head in my arm. (laughs) You? You're over there, too? I'm like, uh, you need uh, one of these before you do that, I think. One of what? I'm going to hold up my arm and have... Yeah, there's a little box, uh, a little brace on his arm that has a screen that's flickering. Uh, I kind of, I kind of see, I kind of see Laura seeing all these things kind of for the first time, and I kind of look like, have you just been surviving out here on your own for a while? Um, 
Yeah. Did you guys all spawn together? Or? Yeah, yeah. We we ended up together. I mean, wow, just good for you surviving. That's just, I just think back to my terrible, terrible experiences so far in this oh. world. Just like, huh. Flashback well, to I fins. almost didn't make it, did I? <laughs> <laughs> like all video games, there's like a little device that allows you to like see your inventory, your level, all, all that stuff. You just forgot that that was part of this game. You're not really... It's just kind of like your your inventory list and stuff like that. Okay. Do I have one? Nope. Oh. Huh. Well, did you guys start with one of those? Or did you get it somewhere? No, you there must have missed that quest one. marker. There could um, be an extra one in the... Uh, in the nuts and bolts. That's where we got ours, I believe. Um, maybe we could kick around in there and see if we can find one. Okay. Are you guys going to do a, a roll perception check since you're inside the nuts and bolts shop right now? To find the device? Well, to find anything in here. Well, I'm specifically looking for a save module. <laughs> so I've become very worried for my safety now. I got a four. Awesome. Crit fail. <laughs> and Eli? Total of 10. Merle? 19. Laura got eight saints. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So you guys are looking around, Jason. You're still thinking about that rage that you just went through a few hours ago. So you're a little distracted. The rest of you see uh, metal boxes, which appear to be the cases for showing off everything. On top of each box, there is a cylinder that's about 12 inches by 12 inches. It looks like it's a slide, and it has a picture next to it of three dots on one of them and each case has a progression of dots on the side of the box the the small 12 by 12. a slide like a like a film slide hmm this seems fishy uh <laughs> what? i was gonna say does it look like the units we have can be slid into them sure does it look like they're supposed to be slid into them i don't know you like <laughs> actually stick your arm in and find out man Oof. uh huh it's getting close to night time right yeah, it's the sun slowly going down. All right, I'll blow a spell slot then. I'm going to try and detect magic. Oh, oh my God. All right, all of the top of the boxes glow to you, have a bright red aura, and then the case itself has a blue aura that leads to the ground that goes off the table. Okay, and uh, I would know what these auras mean. Yes, the red one represents sacrifice, and the other one protection. Ooh, hmm. I guess I'm going to try the protection one and put my arm. It looks like I can put my arm in there and then well, push down on a lever. The protection is, uh, so say so you got a square box and the protection mm-hmm. covers that box and goes all the way to the floor and like a perfect cube. The red, the, the smaller 12 inch by 12 inch box on top of it is what's glowing red that has the handle that pushes down. Uh, Somebody's losing I finger. see. Uh, well, it's my thing. Well, it, is this where you guys got your little pads or what is okay. this? I, I, I nod solemnly and I know what must be done. I grab my remaining shoe and offer it as a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> to... You put it in the hole? Okay. Yeah, I want to put a shoe in there and push the lever as I'm sacrificing. So <laughs> Eli takes his shoe off. <laughs> He's like, I got this. And he throws it in and pushes the handle down. As soon as the it clicks down to the bottom, it springs back up and a flashing screen uh, off to the side of the red, well, to you, red box. It blinks. Significant funds. Mm. Okay, um, I'm going to start digging through my bag. Eli, your shoe's gone. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, or Jason, Merle, was there anything in that sidecar that uh, that might help us out now? Or you guys oh, there's a lot of shit in here. This? <laughs> maybe there's some, something there that might help, help us out here. I, I know we got some credits at some point, maybe. Maybe it needs money. Maybe it, I don't know. Start, like, pulling shit out oh. of the sidecar and putting it. I have inside. 10 euro. <laughs> nice. It's not real money. <laughs> it's better than your money. <laughs> Okay. Is it all the same color? That's dumb. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's red and blue and green and <laughs> So Brent, you roll uh you have four items that you can pull out of the sidecar. So roll a D twenty. This is all the stuff that you've rifled through the sidecar. Nine. Okay, nine. 
there's a bag and it's it seems like it's made out of chain mail. Oh cool. Mm. Okay. You got three more. Um, three more? Okay. Eighteen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you rifle around, you pull up this jar. It's a pickle jar, and it's got some weird liquid inside of it. Mm. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Semi-transparent. I'm going to carefully take the lid off and then smell it. <laughs> I watch so close. I bet you do. So, roll constitution. <laughs> Oh, hopefully. 24. Okay. Uh, it smells horrible. Wow. It brings you back to your bachelor days uh, living alone in your dorm room of your college. Sounds like it's piss. Uh, it's either piss or alcohol that you made yourself. I was going to say, is it like moonshine or something? <laughs> no, uh, it's a repulsive smell. And you've. <laughs> and moonshine's pretty gross. To be fair. <laughs> oh my god are you is that well Eli seems to examine it and he's like shaking his head like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, roll two more times uh, what are you going to do with the jar um, how repulsive like what is kind, does it have a certain kind of smell uh, like methane uh, like bleach <laughs> I'm gonna it's, put, it's, dis, it's distilled feces, man. You 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 huff it, you get high. I'm gonna put the lid back on. Okay. And then yeah. I'm gonna hand it to Eli. <laughs> Where did you go to college, man? <laughs> college oh. reality TV, baby. So uh, you got two more. <laughs> you pull out a box of uh, Stanley's super rubbers. I'm going to check their integrity. Are you going to pull one out? You put your yeah. fist through. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to make sure there's not like holes poked in them or anything. Uh, there's <laughs> 20 of them. Uh, pristine package. They look, it just says lubricated and ribby. And uh, that's it. Hell yeah, let's roll. Uh, well, that was the seven again, so I'm assuming a reroll. <laughs> you can find a, a little Johnson. Two boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these ones are extra small. Oh, these are for you, Light. <laughs> Finger uh, cups. I just tucked them in a back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> these can hold water. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, finally. Uh, there's 20 in there as well. Uh, and that was it. The, everything else is just garbage. Okay. Well, while they're like digging through the garbage, I'm going to try and put my 10 euro note in the uh, cylinder and okay. see if that's enough money. You do the same thing. It, it gives you the same response. Damn. Okay. Yeah, uh, the money's gone. Oh, man, really? <laughs> he gave his shoe back. <laughs> no, no, it took a shoe. <laughs> oh, it took a shoe? Oh, yeah, so maybe it's like adding up? Is there like a meter or anything on it? Nope. Damn. You're the only one that can see these color different differences. So, um, is the color changing? Is it getting like fainter or nope. brighter? Damn. Merle's starting to get impatient with the whole thing, and he's going to stick his hand in there. Oh, okay. Oh, um, geez. Which hand? Um, his left hand. Okay. Good choice. Are you gonna? <laughs> you gonna? <laughs> <laughs> Roll a constitution. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not excited about it, just for the record. <laughs> but I know it needs to be done. Well, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I mean, and roll. it's my thing. I could do it. No, roll a. a, a can you shoot two weapon, two handed weapons, though. I, I, yeah, I it'd be really hard. <laughs> roll a constitution. Let's see if uh, you're willing to do it. That is a 17 on the die plus three all day 20. Okay, so Ooh. you got. You look at everybody and go, I got this. And you throw your hand in there and you slam it down, cut your hand right off. What, like off? Gone? Oh, yeah. What? Uh, Blood spraying everywhere. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, guys, guys, fuck. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. Guys, 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 guys. Uh, shit, shit. Where is it? Where's my hand? Where is my fucking hand? Gone. Buddy, you got a towel or 
dirty rag or something. Uh, and it says the same thing. And Fuck. that's where we're going to end episode four. Thanks for joining us for episode four, The Choices We Make. See what happens to Merle next week on our next episode of Crumpets and Kerosene. Hey, Lee, why don't you take us out? Thanks for joining us on Crumpets and Kerosene. Keep on listening to find out what happens to our gamers in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, download, and write a review. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, Deezer, CastBox, Chrome Mobile, and Pocket Casts. Follow us on Twitter at Crumpet underscore time or on Instagram at Crumpets and Kerosene. Our Facebook is Crumpets and Kerosene, and you can watch our videos on our YouTube, Crumpets and Kerosene. Email us with any questions at crumpetsandkerosene at gmail.com. If you want to contact our cast, you can find our DM, Kelly Williams, on his Twitter at kw underscore steel underscore rain, or on Instagram at infantry underscore kitchen, or on Facebook as Williams Kelly. Jason is played by Brent Marquis, and he is on Twitter at Brent Lee Marquis. Merle is played by Seth Nason, and is on Twitter at Nason underscore the. Eli is played by Donnie Geronic, and is on Twitter at The Raven Wrote. Amanda Lee Baldwin is on Twitter at LemonSeed05. Editing for this episode was done in house. Sound effects were sourced from freesound.com and Vegas Pro 17. We'd also like to give a special thanks to the intro and outro music from Iron Heed. Enter the dungeon. The song, Heroes. Thanks, guys. Get this sweet ladybug band-aid that um, (laughs) is covering up this little spot of blood on my arm, apparently. And now it's really, like, super adhered to my my arm hair. And I'm super not excited about this. You gotta do it quick. Just quick. Uh. Well, uh, is this in character or in real life? No, no this is real life. Because this sounds like an Eli problem. <laughs> Eli is like, well, not safe for band aid removal. <laughs> He'd rip open his arm even further and blood would be spraying. <laughs> Guys, is this normal? Let's see if we get the, yeah, no we get the sound on recording here. Well, Ke- Kelly's still mad at me because <laughs> I made a tool joke in like the chat. <laughs>